Hi, my name is Jeff, and this is a video on a PTO. The first, this is a second video in a series on everything that connects to the back of a tractor. The first video I showed a three-point hitch. This video I'm going to show PTO, which stands for power takeoff. The PTO is the thing that is in the back of your tractor with spindles on it that spins at either 540 or 1000 RPM depending on what type of tractor that you have. My PTO is hidden by this PTO guard and it's covered up by this PTO cover. I take that off and you can see my PTO. It attaches to a metal PTO shaft which is right here. That shaft is covered up by a PTO shield. The PTO shaft attaches to a gearbox on your implement. The gearbox will spin and it will do some sort of work for you on your implement. The PTO is a way of transferring power from your tractor engine back to your implement. But they are extraordinarily dangerous. That's because as the PTO shaft spins with all that power and all that speed, it can take a piece of your clothing, get it wrapped up in it, pull you into the PTO and spin around until you die. There have been some of the ways that people have been maimed or killed with a PTO include head injury, decapitation, suffocation, and dismemberment. These things are extremely dangerous. They have no mercy on you when they grab a hold of a piece of your clothing, and you need to have a lot of respect for them. The most important uh, rule you should follow is that you should never be anywhere near the PTO shaft when it's spinning. Also, when the tractor engine is running, you shouldn't be doing any connections or adjustments on the PTO shaft because there have been cases where people have the PTO halfway in and halfway out while they're making the connection. It's not spinning but the vibration of the tractor put it into gear, started spinning while they were trying to make the connection to the tractor. They got pulled into it and now they're dead. Enough about uh, tractor safety, let's move on to more mechanics. Now my tractor is a smaller tractor, so it's a category one tractor, but unlike everything else that connects to the back of your tractor, the PTO is not rated with a category. But there are three types that you should know about, and you need to know which type that you have. Mine being a smaller tractor has a 540 PTO. That means that it rotates at 540 RPM. The diameter is 1 and 3 eighths of an inch and it has six spindles. For larger tractors, the diameter is the same, 1 and 3 eighths of an inch, but it spins at 1000 RPM instead of 540 RPM and it has 21 splines. And for even larger tractors, the speed is the same, 1000 RPM but the diameter is a little bit bigger, one and three quarters of an inch. Instead of 21 splines, it has 20 splines. You didn't know what type that you have because you need to match up your PTO to your PTO shaft and that needs to match up to your implement. Now let's talk about how you make the connection uh, of your shaft to the back of your tractor. So here's my shaft and you can see that it's a little bit short and some people that are new to tractoring might call up their dealer and say, hey, my shaft is too short and the dealer would say, oh, that's no problem. All you have to do is pull on your shaft and that makes it longer because it's extendable. Now to make the connection, you have to extend your shaft and you also have to line up the splines. And so to line up the splines, you need to either rotate your um, PTO shaft 
and it will rotate sometimes it can be a little tight like this one so it has holes there that you can put in something to give you a little bit of leverage to make it rotate like that if you need to and then uh, or you can rotate it on the implement or on the shaft side anyway you got to line that up now you might be wondering why this shield is off of here and you can see all this over here this is an old 1967 Ford 3000 it didn't come with this PTO guard you could get it as an accessory but it didn't have it when I bought this tractor used so I got an aftermarket one and it makes it really difficult to get my hand underneath here and then underneath this uh, shield here so I can get access uh, to this connection right here in order to make or this uh, shaft or this universal joint so I can make the connection so what I have to do is I have to unlock this uh, the shield and move this back so I can get access to it most new tract all new tractors come with a PTO guard and most of them have a hinge right here or this thing will lift up and make it a lot easier for that connection. So I've lined up the splines, I'm extending this, I've pushed that little uh, spring-loaded pin in and I just push it in until it's locked in there. All right, this is a uh, PTO shaft, it's kind of short, but I want to use that, it's easier to demonstrate. Here's the little, it has the spindles, it has the little spring-loaded pin to release things. It has this universal joint, two universal joints. It has a single Zerg fitting that will grease both universal joints. Some have separate Zerg joint uh, Zerg fittings to grease each individual universal uh, joint. The other one that it, other thing that it has on here, it has this bearing uh, on here. This is a plastic bearing. It needs to be greased, and the reason it needs to be greased is it slides around the shaft right here. In order for this, so what's supposed to happen is that the PTO shield, this attaches to the shield, that plastic uh, protective thing, that black pla uh, plastic protective thing, it attaches to that and it stays stationary while this metal shaft is spinning at either 540 or 1000 RPM. In order for that to happen, you need to make sure that this thing is greased. And you need to grease it every time that you take it out uh, in order for that uh, to work properly. Now getting back to my rotary cutter, you can see that there is a um, Zerg fitting right there which is used to, to grease the universal joint and here is my plastic bearing that I've manually greased and here is the uh, bell housing of the PTO shield. Now on this bell housing there is a let me see if I can see it there's a plastic Zerg fitting well it's plastic and they break all the time and if you grease this as frequently as you're supposed to then most likely you're gonna break this and so that's the reason that I disconnect all this so that I can manually grease this every time that I take it out. Now the way that this works so that the uh, shield stays stationary and the shaft can spin on the inside you need to make you need something to keep it from spinning and that's what this chain is over here. The chain uh, attaches to the guard and then it also attaches to a little um, plastic connection right there. That plastic connection 
oftentimes breaks because, well, it's plastic. Most people just let it wrap around the shield so that it puts a lot less tension on that little plastic um, connection that it's made to. So here it is on the front. This is specifically designed a uh, hole there to put your uh, chain on. And this uh, is one on the back and I've connected it up to the um, a hole there uh, for the uh, on the implement side and now the the front of this is identical to the back of this regarding the universal joint and the uh, that little plastic bearing that needs to be greased so now let's talk about the the shaft there are the shaft has a male end and a female end. The male end fits inside the female end and slides in back and forth inside the uh, female end. You need to make sure there's plenty of grease so that that doesn't bind up. And the reason that it needs to uh, slide in and out is because the distance between your tractor and the gearbox on your implement will change as you're going down the field and your implement is going up and down or left and right the distance between those two points will change and you need to have an accommodation for that otherwise this shaft would bind up so that's the reason it has to slide back and forth and you need to make sure that it's properly greased so that it can do that now the uh, shaft unlike everything else on the back of your tractor um, doesn't isn't rated with a certain category it's rated with a certain class but it depends on where it was made either North America Germany or Italy mine was made in Italy and so it has the easiest classification it's one through eight with one being the smallest and eight being the largest And you need to know uh, what type of PTO class that you have and where it was made so that you can either buy, if you have to buy a replacement shaft or if you need to buy parts for your shaft such as the universal joint or if you need to buy anything related to the shield including these bearings uh, that usually go out on these, on these things. So, in order to do that, I have a website to show you. So here's the website that I was talking about. It's a popular website for determining what type of PTO shaft you have. It's paulbparts.com. You can go to that website or you can just freeze frame this video. But you can see there's a North American style, an Italian style, and a German style. Got to figure out what style that you have, and then you have to look at, you have to take measurements to figure out what uh, class you have uh, for each individual um, uh, country of origin, and that will determine what class you have. As you can see, that the North American uh, comes in uh, a series of numbers the Italian comes in a series of one through eight which is the most uh, is the easiest and the German has a different series but anyways that's uh, you need to figure that out because uh, you may need to buy uh, parts for your either your shaft or your uh, shield well, I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, that's not everything that I know about PTOs, but the video is getting too long. The next video, I'm going to have to do two more videos. The next video is going to be on how to determine if your PTO is too short or too long and how to make corrections. And then also the connections to your 
implement which includes shear bolts versus a slip clutch and then the video after that will be the different types of PTO which includes transmission PTO, live PTO and an independent PTO and how those work. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you saw any mistakes that I made I would appreciate some helpful friendly comments so that both me and my listeners can learn and I thank you for watching.